short because I've heard such great things being said about stories. You know, and the you know the evening is about um, edgy stories, isn't it? And uh, stories drive education in such a profound way. Um, and it's been lovely in these last few years to uh, to get that said by people who get listened to. So Daniel Willingham said in his book, didn't he, that human beings naturally favour narrative; they naturally favour stories which some of us have been saying for years, but it gave us the nod to say it a bit louder and uh, and to be heard, maybe. Um, Kieran was talking about it earlier. She had that Philip Pullman mm -hmm. quote. She said, you know, that, that hum humans... Jonathan Gottschall's phrase, humans are the storytelling animal. That's how we order knowledge. That's how we order experience. That's how, mm -hmm. we, that's how we make sense of it all. That's how we get through our lives, by telling stories about it. And I think we're nervous about that. Some of us in our classrooms... You know, some people will think, well, storytelling is, is the job of the of the literacy teacher or, or maybe the drama teacher. But it's what all of us do, whether we're teaching IT or whether we're teaching geography or humanities. We are telling stories. That's We're putting the narrative into the children's head. It is the ultimate schema. It's the way that we get things stuck together. Um, so the only thing I wanted to say over above what Howell said about, about curriculum, about telling a story that connects to people what's the who are the people where are they what's the problem this is all about creating narrative you know so Howell was talking about it and Kieran was talking about it and I don't think I need to say a lot more except for to say we really need to investigate how those stories land with our audience this year I've got a year four class and stories are so powerful that if I tell stories that aren't very well stories or stories that make assumptions or stories that rest upon stereotypes, then I can get into really dangerous ground really quickly without any intention of doing so. I'll give you an example. I often tell the story of the three wishes, um, which I won't tell you now. I'll tell you some other time if you like. I always used to tell it as in, in, a, in a house in the forest lived a little old man and a little old lady. And in this story, the lady is a scold and the, the man goes out and cuts the wood and comes back every day and, and she's not grateful for the work he does. I caught myself on that. I said, you can't be doing that. You know, it may be that there's a mum at home who, who cooks and cleans, a dad who brings home the bacon. It may well be the other way around, or it may be that both are unemployed. Or it, this is not a helpful assumption. I now tell the stories in a house in the forest live two little old men. It makes no difference to how the story works. So thinking before you land stories, whether you're in geography, whether you're in history, whether you're in any subject, what's the underlying message? What's the underlying assumption? Can I twist that to make it a healthier message? It's really important. Um, the other bit I wanted to say about telling stories is really knowing the bones of the story, by which I mean the underlying structure. If you're not great at telling stories or you haven't thought about it or you haven't had a lot of practice at it, you tend to go to da 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 and then this happened and then that happened and then the next thing happened and then the other thing. And, th and this kills stories. It's not really how they work. <laughs> stories work by a set of really crystalline images. So you think about a story as a necklace or a chain of jewels, polish up the jewels and let the chain take care of itself. And I, and I wanted to illustrate this. This was my plan by singing you a song. Is that all right? Have I got time to sing you a song? I think we're a lovely way to sort of finish things up this evening, Ed. Yeah, go for it. Uh, of course. Yeah, so listen, yeah. um, Christmas time, I don't know about you. I'm so maybe you are um maybe your decorations in the classrooms and cutting out snowflakes and singing maybe you love christmas or maybe like me it's got a lot of melancholy associations with it maybe christmas has not always been an easy time of year for you i love those christmas songs <coughs> which uh which really delve into the melancholy of it and my, one of my favorite christmas songs of all time is uh, i think they didn't think it was a christmas song but it's the pretenders two thousand miles um it mentions christmas and it's about a Christmas without somebody. But just listen to how um, Chrissy Hindy wrote it, how she creates the story as a, a string of jewels, which are connected only loosely, but together tell a really powerful story. He's gone. Two thousand miles is very far. The snow is falling down. It's colder day by day. I miss you. 
all the children were singing. He'll be back at Christmas time. And these frozen and silent nights, sometimes in a dream you appear. Outside under the purple sky, diamonds in the snow sparkle. And our hearts were singing, it felt like Christmas time. Two thousand miles is very far through the snow. I'll think of you wherever you go. He's gone. Two thousand miles is very far. Snow is falling down, it's colder day by day, I miss you. I can hear people singing, so it must be Christmas time. I can hear the people singing, and it must be Christmas time. makes me cry that song it's so beautiful and because the video of it was all the pretenders dancing around in the snow with weird stuffed animals and things i think we all thought oh it's a funny christmas song but you listen to it it's heartbreaking you know the children are saying you know he'll be back for christmas and mum's saying yeah but she knows he won't it's such a heartbreaker anyway thank you for letting me sing that one do you want something jolly to finish or yeah. shall we just go to bed with tears in our eyes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. While I've got you, as well, uh, yeah. I don't know if you had a chance. Do you want me to try to drop your name into the prize draw that we're going to do in just a second as well? I think it's in, mate. You're, you're in the list. I got you. Sorry, you're already there. Sorry. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what you've got, but I want it. <laughs> no, I, I don't get a lot for Christmas, mate. So uh, whatever I find in a post, I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up and put it under the tree. <laughs> uh, my, my 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 little pack of sharpie going to go under treats. Nice. Come on. Uh, I don't drink it. Uh, um, should we, just uh, with that in mind, actually, should we just do the prize draw quickly, Bookie, and then uh, have a little sing song to, to play us out at Thank the end? Brilliant stuff. Okay, cool. So uh, there are three prizes available. Uh, the uh, sort of top prize, as it were, is a £50 Amazon voucher from our sponsors, Classroom.Clown. Nice. Um, and uh, the second place prize is a coaching session uh, with our my uh, lovely co-host, uh, Bookie Youssef. And nice. the third prize is a, a similar session, albeit uh, more like EdTech coaching, <laughs> a bit of support for you um, in the classroom. That was my ideas around teaching and learning with technology, or if you wanted something different instead uh, perhaps a little twilight with me uh, in your school for uh, a little an, an hour or so after school one day so and uh, with that in mind i'm just going to do that thing which everyone has been trying to do all evening which is share their screen here we go <laughs> and there's the uh, wheel spinner and let's do it in reverse order so the person who uh, wins this one will get the, the the session with me and so the winner there is ding 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 very good. Well, that's Kareen Latham from Seaview Primary. We'll uh, have Amazing. to catch up and sort that out. Brilliant stuff. Well done, Kareen. I'll remove you from the list there. Uh, next up for the prize uh, for some coaching with Bookie is Saliha Patel. I've oh. got to handle as well. Sally Her. Uh, so that's her. Well done. And then finally, the uh, big one. Uh, it's not a cash prize, but a big prize for uh, <laughs> uh, from our sponsors, Classroom.Cloud, is, oh, nearly Dave and Travis. It's <laughs> Melvin Riley, Rock 1963. Brilliant stuff. Well done, uh, Melanie. Uh, so I've got everyone's names all stored nicely in my little spreadsheet as well. Uh, so we'll be in touch about sorting those prizes out. Well done to all of you there. And then to play us out uh, for the end of the show this evening, 
and we have Mr. Ed Finch. Sing with me, ding dong merrily on high. Well, I was, I was doing a desk count, you know. Ding dong merrily on high. It's the name of the day, one letter, it's quite small. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you. Singing, yeah, uh, is definitely not my forte. Never was, never no, will. No, and I'm equally bemused anyway. But Ed, thank you so much. <laughs>